So if you've been playing around with Google's new sign-in library, you might have a few follow-up questions like, can you use this to identify the user to your server? How would you use it to authorize services like Google Drive? And what's up with this disconnect call anyway? And why did I choose to represent our developer as a delicious little green gummy person? Well, let's see if we can answer some of these questions for you in this episode of Route 85. Hi there, I'm Todd Kerpelman, and let's get into a little Google sign-in Q&A, shall we? All right, we'll start with a simple one. Question number one, how can I tell if my user has actually signed in? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. Just check and see if the GID sign user object exists. If it does, then yes, your user has signed in. And if it doesn't, then no, they haven't. Okay, that was, that was kind of a warm-up question. Let's move on to something a little more complicated. Question number two, can I use the new Google sign-in library for things like authorizing my app to use other Google services like Google Drive? The answer is yes. In fact, you, you probably should. The new Google sign-in library still uses OAuth 2.0, meaning that you can use it to not only identify the user, but your user can also use it to authorize your app to use a number of different Google services on their behalf. How you do this depends a bit on the other Google libraries you're using, but for many of these libraries, you're gonna to need to do two things. First, add the scopes you're requesting to the scopes array that's part of the Google sign-in singleton instance. You can request things like seeing what files are in your user's Google Drive folder, asking for their Google Plus profile information, viewing what events are on their calendar, and much, much more. Now, after your user has signed in, you'll need to pass their OAuth information to the library that you are using. In Google Drive's case, you can grab your OAuth2 authorizer by calling authentication.fetcher authorizer on your current user and then pass that along to your Google Drive service, kind of like so. At this point, your Google Drive library is now properly authorized and you can use it to access your user's drive folder, list files there, or do whatever else your user has given you permission to do. I, I like ALF. Don't judge. Question number three, how do I send my user's ID to my server? So once a user is signed into Google, you get back their user ID, which you're free to use on the client to identify them. Now you might think that you could use this ID to send information about your user to the server, but in fact, this would be a terrible idea. The issue is that you should never trust your client. An evildoer could very easily hack your client or create a fake client to send down a similar request, but use somebody else's user ID. Now, if your server were to trust that user ID blindly, you could end up leaking a whole bunch of sensitive information. That's bad. So instead, you'll notice that in addition to the user ID, Google Sign-In also provides this giant string known as an ID token. This giant string, which really looks more like this, contains three sections. You've got a small header, some data about the user, which includes things like your user's ID, this application that this ID token is for, and a signature provided by Google servers. You can basically think of the signature as a hash that confirms that everything in the data portion here is accurate. If an evil hacker tried to change this data, the signature wouldn't match up and the token would be invalid. So here's how this would work. Your app would send this ID token down to your server. Your server would then verify that this ID token looks legit. And there are two ways of doing this. You can pass it along to Google to verify for you, which is easy to do but takes a bit of time because it involves a network call. Or you can verify it yourself on your own servers, which is a whole lot faster but requires a little more code. Luckily, we have libraries for you to do this and uh, I recommend you use them. Don't try and reinvent the wheel yourself, particularly where security is involved. Either way, once you've verified that this ID token is in fact legit and it's intended for your app and it was issued somewhat recently, you can then extract the user's ID from this ID token and feel confident that, you, that your user is really who they say they are. Now at this point, I'd probably have your server generate like its own random string to send back to your client, and maybe you can use that as a way to identify your user rather than say like verifying this ID token every single call, but you know, it's up to you. Question number four, what's up with these access token methods? So if you've been perusing our reference documentation, which is how I like to spend my Friday nights, you might notice we have some methods like these. What are they and when do you need to use them? Well, the short answer is almost never these days. Back before you could easily get this fetcher authorizer object to do things like enable the Google Drive service like I talked about in question two, you might have used these calls to manually authorize the Google Drive service on your own. But now you don't even need them for that anymore. So the best answer is don't worry about these calls. Much like job titles at a startup company, they're not necessarily as important as they sound. Hmm. Hey, can, can we amp that up a little bit? A mm, little bit more? More? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the stuff. That's, that's good, I like that. Question number five, what's the difference between sign out and disconnect? 
So in the previous video, you saw me sign the user out by calling GID sign in dot shared instance dot sign out, right? Now this call basically removes all locally stored information that Google has about this user's identity. The sign-in library simply doesn't know anything about them anymore. This is nearly instantaneous. It's all just local data, no network calls are needed, so there's no callback. So right after calling it, you're probably gonna wanna do your own purging of locally stored information associated with that account. But then if you check around our documentation, you'll notice we have a disconnect call along with this did disconnect with error delegate method. So what are those all about? Well, the idea with disconnect is there are times your user wants to stay signed into your app, but they no longer want their Google identity associated with that account. A typical situation might be where you've got an app where you're managing sign-in some other way, maybe you have your own account system, but you're still using Google sign-in so that you can, for example, get access to your user's Google Drive content. Well, this user might wanna say, hey, you know, I'd like to stay signed into your app, I just don't wanna give you access to my Google account anymore. So we wanna wipe out the stuff associated with the Google account. And for that, you're gonna to wanna to add a disconnect feature. This is typically something you might put in a My Account screen somewhere. So disconnect is a way for a user to break the ties between your app and their Google account. Calling disconnect does involve a network call to Google servers, so there is a delegate method that gets called on your client when the process is finished. Now in this callback, you're gonna to wanna to remove any data that was retrieved through Google's APIs, both locally as well as anything that is stored on your servers. Now disconnecting, it's not a particularly common case, but it is important to have, and so that's why you see it mentioned all throughout the documentation. But again, don't confuse it with signing out. They're two very different things. So there you have it, some important questions around the new Google sign-in library answered for you. If you have other questions about the sign-in library, well, you know, you can go read the documentation. That's what it's there for, you know. But you could also leave them in the comments below and maybe we will take a look at them. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you soon on Route 85.